research could change the way we tackle anxiety and depression. Scientists analyzed the brain activity in mice and found significant differences between how stress impacts male and female rodents, highlighting how important it is to take gender into account during treatment for humans. I'm here with the founder of the Counseling and Wellness Center of Pittsburgh. We have Stephanie Wickstrom here to talk about what this means for therapists. Yeah. I don't know if you were able to read any of this, this study and the research that came out of it, but how do you think this applies in your field? Oh, it absolutely does. And, you know, we, we're focused on the behavioral end, but of course, neuroscience, it really guides our ability to, you know, support people's change. So we often see that women are processing stress very differently. Um, you know, there's something called tend and befriend. So women are much more likely whenever they're stressed to reach to a friend, call a friend, um, and process that externally. So that leads to um, women are producing oxytocin whenever they're processing that way. And oxytocin is very protective of our cardiovascular system, leading to a, a hypothesis that says that's one of the reasons that wim, women live longer. Because we're able to reduce our stress right. even just by having those conversations and reaching out. Yeah. And so alternatively with men, you're seeing they internalize things, yes. hold it in, bury it yes. deep down. And it leads to so much more, you know, mental health pathology with men. So they're much less likely to reach out for counseling. They're internalizing their stresses. And is there an importance in doing this sooner? I mean, if men are burying this down deeper, when they come to you, when they finally seek help, is it harder to unload all of that, to unpack it all? Yeah, well, also culturally, right? So if men are a little more aware of their feelings, then, you know, culturally they might get different messages about what that means right. for them. So I think we have to really encourage men to have more language surrounding their emotions and more awareness of it. And have those conversations. Yeah. Yeah. Are you seeing an increase in that happening in your practice? Men absolutely do. You know, they, they come in for therapy, both individual and couples. Um, they do. Well, hopefully we're starting to shift that mindset yeah. a little bit. Um, and you're not going anywhere. You're sticking around because coming up, we're going to talk uh, with Stephanie about how the oldest daughter in the family can often end up caring for their parents and siblings during childhood. We're going to talk about how to prevent them from having to take on that toxic role.